Welcome, everyone. Delighted to have you here at, uh, at our ninth genomic medicine meeting. Um, on behalf of uh, Carol Bolt to my left, Howard Jacob um, over there, and the other members of the genomic medicine working group, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have everyone here. Uh, I think several of you are, are new to our genomic medicine meetings. This is great. This is one of the purposes of these meetings is to bring groups together who haven't necessarily uh, been talking previously, particularly um, for this meeting where we wanted to, uh, to bring together basic science and clinicians uh, to try to figure out how we can speed the uh, translation and also take things back from the bedside that might be observed or uh, problems identified and, and take them back to the lab for, for further investigation. So that's kind of the, the goal of today. Um, I was going to start off by just showing you uh, how these, these meetings have evolved uh, since 2011. Uh, so we began uh, in June of 2011 with a meeting in uh, Chicago where we had sort of an overview view of all the groups in the U.S. that we were aware of that were doing genomic medicine. Um, and from that, we re realized that there was an awful lot going on, but a lot of it in isolation um, and really not sort of linked together. And so one of the things we wanted to do with these meetings and, and other efforts were to bring them together. Um, immediately from that meeting, we uh, uh, brought forward an, a, a program we called ClinAction, which was a, a workshop about six months later to try to figure out what variants would be important for groups to report. It turned out that each of these groups were kind of reviewing viewing all the variants that were available uh, at the time and figuring out in isolation what to report. And we thought, well, that's silly. Why not try to do that uh, more as a, as a group endeavor without, uh, without a lot of duplication? That led to the ClinGen program. We have Aaron Ramos and several other people um, involved in that, in that program here today. Um, we also uh, added a pharmacogenetic component to our eMERGE program that had been ongoing, uh, and that was uh, directly out of uh, coming out of this meeting, recognizing things that were sort of available and ready uh, to be implemented. Uh, our second meeting, ab about uh, six months after that, um, uh, led to uh, a series of, uh, of RFAs that then um, um, resulted in the IGNITE program, implementing genomics and clinical practice. Uh, that is now six sites that are are doing exactly that, uh, trying to study ways of disseminating and implementing uh, genomics and clinical care. Uh, our third meeting um, focused on payers. We had a, su a subsequent meeting with payers, uh, as you know, um, getting uh, payers and, and regulators to address uh, issues in terms of reimbursement and, and uh, evidence and utility for genomic medicine is a tough nut to crack, and we're continuing to work on that. Our fourth meeting in January of 2014 uh, brought together uh, uh, professional societies looking at uh, uh, physician education and more broadly clinician education in genomic medicine that led to our uh, Intersociety Coordinating Committee, now led by Bob Wilden, who is here, um, trying to share educational materials, again, keeping people from doing things in isolation, but, uh, but sharing across groups. Uh, our fifth meeting was uh, with a number of uh, federal agencies, again, uh, trying to develop a federal strategy. Uh, this um, uh, led to, to collaborations with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the FDA. Uh, those lines are dotted to suggest, not to suggest that genomic medicine caused CMS and the FDA. Um, um, but at least we, we did have some interactions with them, and those have borne fruit for us as we've been uh, developing the Precision Medicine Initiative. Um, uh, this also led to uh, the development of a trans-NIH working group that meets on a monthly basis to review uh, what's going on uh, NIH-wide in genomic medicine. Uh, our sixth meeting in January of 20. 14, so sorry, the, um, um, uh, the education meeting was January 2013, but this one in 2014 uh, was of basically global leaders in genomic medicine, those international groups that we were aware of that were doing uh, genomics and clinical care. Uh, this has led to a, an action collaborative in, in uh, association with the uh, National Academy of Medicine um, that uh, uh, then subsequently uh, uh, produced a workshop and some efforts in uh, Stevens-Johnson toxic epidermal uh, necrolysis uh, syndrome, uh, trying to uh, use genomic predictors to prevent that uh, dreaded complication of certain uh, medications. Uh, our seventh meeting in October of 2014 uh, was on genomic clinical decision support, and that has led to a close collaboration with the digitized program uh, of the Genomics Roundtable that Mark Williams is heavily involved in. Uh, our eighth meeting in June of last year um, uh, was to, to sort of give an overview of all of our programs, kind of take stock and figure out what we needed to do in the future. Um, and one of the things that was clear is that we needed to, to uh, combine these programs uh, for evidence and, and really um, uh, see if we could improve their interactions, as well as maybe adding on 
add some, some simple measures of clinical utility and personal utility uh, into those programs, and those are sort of continuing to percolate. Uh, and also one of the biggest uh, recommendations of that meeting was that we have uh, this group get together, which is um, uh, to uh, bring together uh, basic scientists and, and uh, clinical genomicists to um, uh, further this field. So with that, I will hand it over to Carol.